Parental discretion is advised. Hey guys, this week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we look back on Bound for Glory, forward on Hell in a Cell, and a little bit of indie wrestling and a few great interviews. Mayhem Show. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Body same contest? Can we do that? Do you want to do your thing first? Yeah. All right. What's this for? The Mayhem Show? Mayhem Show, yes. Yes, sir. We live. I think we're live. I don't have a microphone on my shitty show. <laughs> and I can't say shit on my show either. But you I can, can say you can shit sh- here. You can say whatever you want here. Fuck you, Sorg. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that out. Cut that oh, out. Oh, no, no. We're going to keep All it right, in. That's in. We're going to do right now, and I've, we, I've been preparing for this for months, a body slam contest. Shane Taylor and Justin Plummer. And you're going to see a body slam you haven't seen, I hate that son of a bitch. You're gonna see a slam that hasn't been seen in the history of wrestling. I gotta stretch out for it though. I need some help. Sora, <laughs> can, you, can you please come help stretch me? This is gonna be hard, that's a big man. What's going on? Stretch me. What are you doing here? Hold, what? hold my arm. What? So right now, Sorg is stretching Justin Plummer for his body slam challenge. I honestly don't know what's going on here, and that 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 looked really bad. Uh, we're 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 filming right now. This is this is this is the irresistible this is the irresistible force meeting the unmovable object. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and down he goes. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, what were you thinking? Turn that off, please. Hey guys, welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. That was a little clip, uh, one of a few things coming at us, thanks to Riz uh, from this past weekend's IWC Retro uh, Reunion. We'll get into a bit of that. It's fancy night for me, yes. It's time for the Mayhem Show live from Pittsburgh, PA. We're going to start talking some wrestling and have some fun here with me from San Antonio, Texas. Amen. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. I just ate a slice of pumpkin bread, which is super crazy for me to do on a Tuesday night. That's how wild and crazy I am and how prepared I am for tonight's Wrestling Mayhem show. I'm excited, Sorg. Excellent. Also joining us from the Bad Bronx, New York, Mad Mike. How you doing? I'm worried about Russell Fan. He's eating pumpkin bread on a Tuesday night. It's just pumpkin bread. I'm worried, Russell Fan. I'm worried. I think you need counseling. I think we need to get you some help. It's Sword, do we have no. room in the budget for Amy to get some help? I, we don't. We have not established the uh, WMS wellness policy to that great It's uh, October. Just yet. I can it's have October. Pumpkin. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Pumpkin. Pumpkin bread is a gateway bread. That's all I'm saying. I'm is there other? Worry about you, because I, <laughs> I look at you like you're my son. It's fine. I'm just scared for you. Mm-hmm. Anyways, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, uh, you can find out more about us over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We're on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube. And hey, look for the new Wrestling Mayhem Show Extra with no E. X. X. Extra. Uh, up on iTunes. That should be live by now. It's going to have all your wrap-ups, all of your ready-to-rumble uh, commentaries, and all that other kind of fun stuff. Uh, the after shows we've been doing for YouTube in audio format so you can get it on the go. This is this means you, AJ. Um, and also, you can drop us a line to that email address that good times, good times. Good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or 412 206 WMS0. We actually got a few voicemails tonight. Uh, so, uh, and also, you know, h- hook up with us over on at Mayhem Show on Twitter, on Facebook, especially the Facebook group Wrestling Mayhem Show and Google. Plus. So, let's get started the only way we know how. With, There's no other way. There is no, no way. other way. There are at least 13 other ways. So sh- 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 shut up. <laughs> Not on this show. Uh, it's the fan mail time. Uh, uh, Eamon, do you have the first one? Sure, I'll do the first one since it's partially directed towards me. Okay. 
And it's an interesting one. It's from a good friend, Dustin. We love Dustin uh, here at the Wrestling Mayhem Great show. commentator on our YouTube videos. About uh, TNA Wrestling. He's the only logical person that I will debate uh, TNA Wrestling about. Awesome. Uh, so here we go. Dear Mayhemians, Eamon argued last week that wrestling fans should buy a pay-per-view for the story and its progression. While I do agree that wrestling needs logical stories to make it more captivating, I disagree with this being the reason as to why I would spend a good amount of cash for a pay-per-view. A wrestling story should climax at the pay-per-view, but I wouldn't buy one based on the idea that I want to see the story progress. There are various drama shows on television that have in-depth characters in varying situations that can provide comedy, drama, and action. However, only a wrestling program can bring together all these elements under one roof as well as incorporate the wrestling athleticism it takes to perform these matches without killing themselves. If I am buying a pay-per-view for quality matches, I can normally be pleased with letting go of so much cash at once as long as I get a quality match, regardless of storyline direction. However, I would feel let down if I just gave up $50 to see storyline progress when I could have watched Breaking Bad for free and received as much better drama for my efforts. Think about it, Eamon. Even you said it is more important for a talent to possess wrestling skill than the acting skill that helps carry out the storyline in his wrestling. Mm. Um, yeah, and I see what he's saying. I, I find it kind of interesting. Um, I feel like if we asked this question 20 years ago, I think the question they would be a bit different. I think we live in an era where people do expect specifically good wrestling. Like I'm watching a wrestling show because I want to see a good match. If you were told, I mean, if you ask people in like the 1980s or, the, or even like the, the early 90s, wait, wait, wait. they wouldn't they wouldn't be like I'm watching this because it's a good match. No, I'm watching it because I want to see, you know, if Hulk Hogan's going to get his revenge on King Kong Bundy or whatever, you know? I disagree. Even? I disagree. I, I, I think yeah. I think you're talking. I don't think you're talking about the broad pe- people that are putting money down for these pay per views. Mm. Um, people, yeah, I respectfully disagree. With yeah, this I they, it, they I think I think the problem is and why uh, for many years uh, the wrestling programs got away from the wrestling aspect uh, and that being the important aspect is that they became more about the storytelling in the outside of the ring because that's what they felt that attracted people. Uh, the attitude was about responding to the Jerry Springers of television at the time, um, and less, 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 less about wrestling. And so, um, I'm not. I get what you're saying, but I'm not necessarily talking about seg- stuff that doesn't happen in a wrestling match. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about storyline progression. Yeah. I'm not talking about like they don't want you know specific things. A, they don't want a straight wrestling match. They want all the outside stuff. I'm just saying they you buy you would buy something because you saw something happen and you've seen it progress, and you're looking for a culmination of a story. Yes. I think good wrestling, if if at least if you're WWE or TNA, there's at least somewhat of a guarantee that you're going to get good wrestling on a show because of the performers that that they employ. Yeah, yeah, Mike. But see, the see the thing is, you can show me. A five star wrestling match. If I don't know the story behind it, if I don't know why these guys are going like balls to the wall against each other, I'm not going to give a shit. Yeah. Because I think I think most of us, when we first got into wrestling, it wasn't because we turned on and we saw a Kenta 30 minute classic and we're like, oh, I gotta watch this. It's a storyline thing that draws you in. Like, it's something that grabs you, and that is not necessarily something within a match. It's a story. Wrestling wrestling for the sake of wrestling is fine. Like, it's okay. But I think the stuff... I mean, CM Punk and John Cena was a great match, but was anyone buying it because they thought CM Punk and John Cena was going to be a physically good wrestling match? No, they bought it because of the storyline progression of it. Hmm. Well, moving on, we have more questions. Yeah. Yes, we do have. And more let us know what you think of this too. Yes, absolutely. This divisive oh, subject in the chat room and on the on the on the twitters and stuff. Okay, question number one: Should Cody avoid wearing long sleeve dress shirts in general, or is he into ripping off the buttons of the cuffs every time he gets his blood boiling? 
What? <laughs> That's an interesting question. Um, I think that <laughs> happens in general when anyone wears like business attire to wrestle. <laughs> All right. Ironically, I watched a match earlier this morning where this came up. Really? Hmm. Yes. Ironically, very ironically. Um, I was looking for uh, the WWE mashups on my YouTube app. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that came up was a Fulfill Your Fantasy Divas Battle Royal from Taboo Tuesday. So, of course, I had to watch that first because that obviously takes precedence. And as Jazz was walking to the ring to get fired up, she tore the sleeves off of her shirt. (laughs) I can't make that up. So I, I think I think Cody is Cody should Cody should keep rip, keep ripping sleeves because Tony Atlas has fucked sleeves. Yeah, it's gotta be cumbersome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Number two. Did TNA really hit the reset button on the game of Madden because the computer was racking the score up on them? <laughs> if so, what would you like to see between BFG and Genesis to really sell you on the idea of this being a new direction for TNA? Um, um Yeah, this is all you. It's on me. Yeah, I, I didn't get around to watching it, unfortunately. I doubt Mike did. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay, so both of you guys, please address. I, I I do hope to watch it within the next week. So I can't think of anything in particular. Um, it all depends on where the AJ thing is going, since that sort of seems to be the main focus. Um, they're having a rematch for the championship this Thursday on Impact. Which scares the shit out of me. Because I mentioned last week about like the whole like visceral reaction that comes with professional wrestling and what makes it successful. Mm-hmm. And how, for example, WCW had Sting beat Hogan for the title at Star Kane 97 and had Sting immediately drop it afterwards. You know, it doesn't make any, you know, real difference if Bully Ray doesn't get any comeuppance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know? I would really, really like to think they're hitting the reset button. I don't think they're hitting the reset button, but I'd really like to think it. And if something I something I want to see, I want AJ to win the rematch. And then I want him to start making demands, like CM Punk did. Only this time, have the demands be met. Like... AJ Styles have ice cream AJ bars. Have AJ demand to bring back the six sided ring. Yes. First and foremost, have him demand to get rid of the ramp. Like simple shit that they can take to not make TNA look like it did back in the day, but to make it look different than WWE. Because that's what they should be trying to be. The reason WCW was so successful when they first started the Monday Night War, is because they were different. They were completely different. And that's why it worked. Uh, yeah, I agree. I, no one's going to want to buy WWE Lite. Mm-hmm. And it's not it's just a matter of the talent you employ. It's the way that you try to portray yourself. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So that's my thoughts on it. Next one? Uh, third question... Uh, if you could have things your way, how would you have the Hell in the Cell pay-per-view go down? Each person pick one match and give both the match result, and who you would who you would book the winner in a feud against heading into Survivor Series. Hmm. I guess well, maybe we can get into that a bit later. When I'm assuming we're gonna do sort of a Hell in the Cell preview. Well, I kind of like uh, I kind of like the way he's going about and asking this. Um, no, yeah, pick he, one he, match. Each of us pick do. one match. Uh, I I want well I'll, I'll pick the lower end one I'll, 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 I think that three way tag match needs to be uh, a show stealer and uh, rejuvenates the, the tag team championship in general I, I don't think it matters who wins out of it to be honest it mm-hmm. needs to show hey tag team's a real thing and it can be entertaining and it can be a st- show stealer. Mm-hmm. Eamon? All right, um, Mike. If I have to pick a match. And have it go exactly the way I want to go. Biggie Langston wins the IC title. Yeah. And then, after that, 
he says that he wants to bring glory back to this IC title after Curtis Axel just used it to enhance his legacy. And every title match that he has, he needs to win by a five count. I like when you brought this up last night. Yep. That, that's exactly what I want to do because he does the gimmick in NXT. Everyone loves it. He gets the chant five. Everyone will chant five along with him because people love chanting numbers. It'll be fantastic. <laughs> people love chanting three. Yes. What so I think it'll work. What about you, Eamon? Um, this isn't, I guess, the most popular one to pick. Um, I think... I hope that AJ does retain, not because I dislike Brie Bella, but because I think this story needs to go along a bit further before Brie just wins the championship. I think she needs to win in like very spectacular fashion. Um, and hopefully, since it's leading into Survivor Series, I would hope that uh, – I know Mike mentioned this a couple of weeks ago – that this would be the perfect opportunity to maybe bring up some of the NXT talents, team them with AJ and Tamina to take on some of the Total Divas in a Survivor Series match. I would actually really enjoy seeing that. Hmm. I love how none of us picked Hell in a Cell matches. None nope. of us picked any of the main events. Yeah. 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 Um, excellent. Finish no, because you know what? what? There, for that main event, for Orton and Bryan, there's almost nothing they can do that is going to be satisfactory. Because like for it's everyone. gone too long? Because if Brian wins, it's going to be because, like, Shawn Michaels super kicks Orton or something. Yeah. It's not going to be definitive in the end, unfortunately. Yeah. Because it's not just one-on-one -on -one and somebody got pinned. I think we'll have a definitive champion after Hell in the Cell, but we won't have a definitive ending to the story. Yeah. And I don't think we need one. It's Hell in the Cell. You it's know? I know true. it's a Hell in the Cell and it's supposed to be big because it's Hell in the Cell, but... Mm -hmm. Although we are yeah. angling that your, your two biggest feuds... Uh, the punks, the punk Heyman and 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 the championship uh, could be enders at Hell in a Cell. Mm -hmm. You know, excellent. Fish it off. Uh, yeah, Heyman. Uh, uh, maybe. No, 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 Heyman. There's more email. Yeah, fish. Oh, more email. I thought you wanted my opinion. I'm sorry. No, uh, I, I don't want your opinion anymore. <laughs> oh. Never. <laughs> uh, that's my time, guys. Keep up the good work, and thanks for taking the constructive criticism in stride with the wrap-ups. The BFG one was solid, but the post-impact one was S-A-W-F-T soft. I don't get Watch it. NXT. Oh, Watch okay. NXT. Watch NXT. Watch NXT. Regards, Dustin. Not sent for my Samsung Galaxy. Excellent. All right, and we got one from Leg Kick TKO. She said, Dear Wrestling Mayhem Show, if Big Show had to walk on eggshells around Stephanie and Triple H, how was he able to afford an 18-wheeler and the ability to override a satellite feed? My immersion. She's mm. angry because it doesn't make sense. Okay. As I mentioned I believe, I believe you were supposed to read that like, My immersion! Thank you. Thank you for the interpretation. As I mentioned previously, I was at PWG's Matt Rushmore, and it featured quite a nice crop of TNA talent, the Young Bucks, Joey Ryan, Trends, and retroactively, uh, pretty Peter Avalon, a.k.a. Nor Freedom. Uh, it did not feature Alexander Cars, and he should feel terrible about that. Yeah, Included Alex. is me and my new best friends, the best friends. Take care and don't forget to brush out uh, Kevin Steen's tassels. Your friend, Leg Kick, TKO. And I'm sorry, I didn't know there was a picture in this one. I'll bring up the email there real quick. There was not a picture. Uh, there was not a picture. I think she forgot to attach it. Oh. Whoops. Yeah. Johnny Gargano was a part of that, which is interesting since he was also part of the uh, secondary uh, main event with Paul London in Cleveland uh, on Sunday as well. I guess uh, huh. flying in was by the skin of his teeth. From the sounds of things, so, um, cool. yeah, uh, travel we, is magic. What's that? <laughs> travel is magic. Travel is magic. Uh, we have, uh, you know, I, I'm actually put uh, uh, a little bit switched up here because I thought we were going to have somebody on here. In the meantime, has anybody caught the Kevin? Or I'm sorry, the Scott Hall uh, uh, podcast uh, with Colt Cabana? I have not listened to it on Colt Cabana's. Uh, I have. Uh, he he caught wind of it, and uh, he uh, 
and unfortunately we have not, but uh, let's, let's listen to his impressions uh, here. And I pasted in the wrong voicemail. Uh, so if you guys can fill for a moment while I go uh, uh, click on this other thing over here. Let's fill about Sorg looking for that voicemail. <laughs> There it is. Oh. It's loading now. Hello, Eamon. Uh, Are we here to uh, Matt Garland, your, your pal the mainstream media. I'm uh, doing a boat diggity style here in the car, driving down some Hill Run Boulevard here on a beautiful Tuesday afternoon. Um, I just had something on my mind I wanted to get you guys' thoughts on. Um, I know as a uh, loyal listener of the Wrestling Mayhem Show, I'm not really supposed to listen to other wrestling podcasts, but I kind of strayed and fell off the wagon this week. And I listened to Colt Cabana's interview with Scott Hall, and it was amazing. And I just, I, the sound of Scott Hall's voice when he's lucid and coherent and sober just brought a smile to my face. And I, I, it, 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 I it's sometimes hard to understand why people put up with um, guys like Scott Hall who have all these demons, but when you hear him, when he's got all this stuff together, you kind of start to understand why people put up with him and why people tried so many times to help him. Um, and it was just, it was a really cool interview to listen to and, 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 and just get inside of his head for once and know that you're getting an actual human being and not whatever the heck we seem to get in some of these other things, specifically the, the mini documentary that ran on ESPN that was just a nightmare. Um, this version of Scott Hall, much better. And I don't even care. I mean, I mean, I don't know if he's going to end up you know, doing, I don't care about Hall of Fames or Royal Royal. I don't care if he ever does a comeback or shows up in WWE again. If he just stays the way he was um, in that podcast that I heard, that's good for me. Because personally, I am so tired of wrestlers just falling away into nothing and watching that happen that I am ready for a good comeback story. And if Scott Hall can be that one, all the better. So I guess I'm just, my question is, if any of you guys heard that interview too and what you guys thought of it, and uh, I'll hang up and listen later. Uh, as I said, I don't think either of us, uh, any of us, got to it. Um, I, I, I I do have to listen back to it because I've heard really good stuff. It's a new one, uh, right? Like it's not one that's been up there because I don't. It's, fa- it's fairly new, yeah. Because uh, uh, I I tend to just kind of like listen to a bunch of them like in a row. Like same with Third, same with uh, Stone Cold. I did see him on the Stone or hear him on the Stone Cold podcast, I believe. Mm. And that one actually, yeah, that was really good too. But I'm enjoying uh, Stone Cold podcast. I enjoy when he has somebody like a Shawn Michaels, Samoa Joe, uh, uh, Kevin Nash on there. Uh, you kind of say, oh, this is why everybody puts up with these guys. It, it, it is the same thing. Same with Kevin Nash. Like Kevin Nash is a cool dude, you know. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I, I know some people that are uh, pretty close acquaintances with him, and uh, they they have nothing but good things to say about him. And and uh, these guys have great personalities in the long run, even, you know, regardless of what you've heard, you know. Right. Um, no, and I think, it's, I think it's really good to see Scott Hall in this state now where he sort of can live his life, you know, exactly. to the fullest. And I think it's – and I've, I've been a fault of this as much as anyone. I think any wrestling fan has been fault of this once. I think there's a tendency to sort of consider wrestlers as almost – and. It's maybe an over exaggeration to say it, but almost like pieces of meat. Yeah. To where like they're de- they oh, don't sure. you don't see them as people. You know, and, and that it's a long standing too. And I know this is something that a lot of, a lot of the wrestlers, even a lot of indie wrestlers, uh, deal with. Like I think I saw one from. Uh, I help me uh, if you saw this, Eamon. I feel like it was either Rachel Summerland or or maybe Portia Perez that was saying, uh, you know, uh, just because you're a fan doesn't mean I'm your friend kind of thing which i that would be Portia, and i agree with that Portia, entirely. yeah yeah and i see i see that happening and and uh, but i mean i also understand sometimes you know fans that come to wrestling shows don't know how to act you know i mean they're the superstars you know even at an indie show they're the superstars you know what i mean um and this is a big well, thing for them and i, I think I some mean, people when i was uh good when um doc remedy was still working for iwc yeah I went with him once early to a show, and I had, like, talked to a few of the guys, you know, just every time I went to Pittsburgh. I've talked to at least one or two wrestlers. Yeah. And when I got there, I was helping bring in the ring and everything, and I saw Simon Dean, and I kind of marked out a little bit. Like, I didn't know how to react. I'm like, oh, dude, I kind of want to 
see if he brought his segue or is on the Simon system or <laughs> if he's going to be Hollywood Nova tonight. Like, I, I just, you know, sometimes you don't know how to react. Exactly. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. And I've, I've had those moments, too, with, with, with certain people. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and some, are, some are even worse, you know. Uh, but no, I mean, but yeah. I don't even know how we got to this point after that one, but, <laughs> um, but Scott Hall seems more cool on the on the podcast than he does. Like, exactly, and he's another yeah. one of those guys that you've seen in the dumps for so long, and just like Jake Roberts, it's so great to like. I've seen Jake, and we've talked about on the show extensively, and had people who experienced and had run-ins with him on the show, uh, and to see him. You know, I still go back to WrestleCon and see him just running around and being happy and, you know, having a new lease on life. It's really good for him. And I really hope something good comes up. Even, you know, maybe he'll do a legend thing with WWE at least and not have a this is how shitty Jake Roberts is kind of documentary yeah. out there, you know? Um, hopefully it becomes a, you know, like. And, a, and I mean, I will say, like, wrestling those shitty moments sort of humanizes people, humanizes wrestlers in a sense. Yeah. Um, but I think some people just down on wrestlers because of that i know for example like tammy linsitz gets a lot of crap and some of it may be rightfully deserved but a lot of it According is to her twitter know. apparently rightfully deserved right um but yeah and some okay, wrestling attracts you also got to remember wrestling attracts a certain kind of personality i there was somebody somebody again messaged or tweeted the other day how much they realized wrestling was similar to comedy you know <laughs> Uh, and it does like the more you look at it, the more you listen to these interviews and these podcasts, the Nerdist and the Co Cabanas and, the, and 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 all those that like are the guys talking about the other guys about the craft. You find out you you start seeing the personality types and what leads them to something like this. Just say I'm going to freaking do this, you know. Um, especially with there's a lot of ego, there's a lot of uh, or something else, you know. And that's why you see a lot of clashes, and that's why you, sometimes you see people that don't really. You know, or people that don't know how to be social on Twitter. You know, it's like we've yeah. complained about certain people in the past. Um, but yeah. But also, that's not exclusive to wrestling. <laughs> no, absolutely. There's, any a, there's entertainment, plenty of shitty people. Really, on inter- entertainment, especially any entertainment where you have to do sh- shitty things until you get to the top. You know, um, yeah. yeah I, mean, I think that's definitely it. So, um, we have two from AJ. I'm sorry. Oh God. Oh diggity. Uh, the first one I list. I, thankfully, I did. I did screen these ones. Uh, and 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 the first one is fairly unintelligible. Like, I don't think he had a point on that one. But he did send a second one, and this one did have a point. Woo! This is bull fucking diggity. I have nothing really to talk about, so I'm just gonna say some words here. Penis, fart, vagina. Maybe I switched uh, pubic them. Pubic hair. I think I switched mons, them. Mons, mounds, coconut. <laughs> Chocolate, peanut butter. So you said this one had a point? Sandwiches. No. Wait. This one sounds like it has a very Jesus. important message for it. And Italian dressing, because that's a nice thing to put on a sandwich. Uh, I, I must have swapped these out. No, oh, wait, wait. No, no, that's not right. That's no, no, I want to hear about, oh, more about no, comments. No, sorry, sorry, I almost demand to hear this one. You, you demand to hear the rest of this? Okay. Woo! Woo! This is Paul. Hold on a second. Now I lost it. He, I mean, oh, he no, he no, it with uh, Italian dressing is a great thing and for it was fun. I And I don't know uh, what happened on the other two hours of Raw. So uh, I'm, not, I'm just not, I'm literally not going to recognize it. Is Damien Sandow cashed in yet? No. no. Why? Who the fuck knows? Mm. They're waiting for that perfect moment when no one will give a fuck. Sorry, everybody who loves Damien Sandow. I love Damien Sandow, but I got to be really honest. Nobody gives a fuck about Damien Sandow. Nobody gives a fuck about SmackDown at all. Like, sci-fi doesn't give a fuck about SmackDown. They're on their no, channel. they don't? Uh, yeah, Raw was fun. Uh, Daniel Bryan does a really good job of Where sleeping in the trainer's off, room. Good job to him. Uh, and, and, and the Bellas felt really bad. Uh, so, yeah, this has been uh, Bo fucking diggity. And the F is for free glassware. Uh, uh, which I, I, I acquired and then gave away to a coworker because I've had some beers. So, uh, bye. <laughs> As he's driving. That's very nice. <laughs> you can hear the car in the background. It's amazing. All right. This one was entitled A Very Serious uh, Voicemail. Okay, this one's number three. As this makes a little bit more sense now. Number three. Let me see. Let me see how this goes. Oh, it's opening Neuro in iTunes. Trade. It's opening in iTunes. What the hell? Woo! 
it in its bow fucking diggity. Now, I've already had one voicemail, and I hope you've played yes. it already. Have we, unfortunately, oh, we I had have. some drinks. Yeah. yeah. Decided to be funny. Tried. This time I'm serious. Sure. Serious bow diggity. Bow S diggity. The S is for serious. Now. Oh. Name change. I've, 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 I've realized something. I listened to the discussion involving uh, the logic and uh, in TNA and yeah, trying and visualizing the storylines and the brand split and everything, and I've, I've realized what? something. I've come to a realization on something here. What if Paul Heyman is a stooge for Triple H? Hmm? Can we consider the following? Mike referenced the fact that CM Punk specifically said that Triple H and Stephanie would be in charge two years ago in the pipe bomb promo, and uh, it's yeah, happened, and CM Punk yeah. isn't doing anything. What if Paul Heyman is a stooge? He's been given Curtis Axel and Ryback at his disposal to keep CM Punk occupied on hating Paul Heyman. Because what happens when Paul Heyman goes away? CM Punk is going to look and go, wait, what the fuck? And start hating Triple H and Stephanie. That's what's going to happen. What if Heyman's just a diversion? A very good and very entertaining, yet a diversion. There's just a thought. Just throwing that out there. Also, I love rankings. I do. I love rankings. I love hierarchy. I love order. And I love systems. It may not seem that way from my thought processes, but it do. I love the concept of the Bound for Glory uh, series. Mm -hmm. The execution is shit every time. But I love the execution of I love the, the, the concept behind it. Put a point system to the consequences of matches, and then let that determine your number one contender. Then you can have legitimate beef over you can't have leg, you can't have beef over who should be the number one contender. You could say, I this guy needs to win by this much to make it to this series. It's a great idea. Dear I love TNA, the car stop it's, fucking it's up. Good. Wait, sorry, you're incapable of doing that. I wish that that was a thing. I really do. I wish that they that there was a number one contender. If you lose the championship match that you have, you go to the bottom of the deck. You have to fight your way back up. It sets up legitimate matches to, to build up to a number one contender. Instead of six guys coming into a ring and saying, I deserve to be seven, and then they have some sort of fatal four-way triple threat scrambled championship omelet match, whatever, that allows them to I would crown love a champion. A scrambled championship omelet match. It's stupid. Because it just resets every time. Why not reset with the next guy in line? The first the number one contender lost, now number two gets in there. And you can have some nefarious things where guys win via a uh, pinfall via distraction, but it's not considered a disqualification and there. Now you can work your heel stuff in. Now you can have something based around this guy needs two points to get in. He must win this match. And then it sets up the inevitable you know, heel business where they don't win. But you can have that and it lets you build a story. It lets you build storylines around it. You can build feuds out of that. You kept me from winning that match and going to the series and now you can set up side feuds. It's not hard. I'm not asking for much. I'm making your job simpler. But, hey, I'm just Bo F. Diggity. The F is for uh, a really shitty spelling of phenomenal. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the phenomenal Bo F. Diggity. Or the one that's not emo and bitch made. What? AJ Styles. Bitch, your name isn't really AJ. You got a fake name tattooed on you, dumbass. It's like Ric Flair tattooing woo on his balls. That's what the bitches do. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> First of all, uh, the TNA Bound for Glory series can be done correctly. It's called the G1 Climax. Fucking watch Japanese wrestling. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have a two. A two, was, that was weird, and also I wanted an omelet match. Um, AJ told me about his Paul Heyman theory Yeah. during Bound for Glory. It's fucking brilliant. I love it. I love the idea. It is so good. I do love the idea. It is right. so good that I want it to be a thing. I want to consume it. Ah, oh, just like... It, and you know what? It actually makes sense, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. It makes so much sense. Even when Triple H 
said to Paul Heyman, like, I like seeing you get get yourself out of these situations. That ties in everything. Mm-hmm. It's like Deus Ex Machina shit. And, it, and remember, remember, and remember, he backed down. Yeah. Remember, remember Paul backing down from that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it makes sense. I love it. I love I know, I know it seems like they, they shy away from intricate storylines. But when they do, I think it's so much more satisfying. And, and oh even God, for. Could you imagine that? I mean. No, just, just if we. All right, let's play that out to its logical conclusion. Mm hmm. Okay? You have Punk being distracted by Heyman. Let's say until the Royal Rumble. Or until TLC, where he, like, takes on Lesnar again, or Ryback again, or whatever. And then you have Daniel Bryan conquering Randy Orton and all of them. And he becomes champion. You could logically have a punk Bryan feud from that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, this is, <sighs> I, I love it. All right, guys. With that, oh, first of all, before we get, we got an interview coming up. Uh, you know, much like, uh, uh, well, not as fun as uh, what we had at the beginning of the show here with uh, Shane Taylor and Justin Plummer. Uh, but hey, you know, we've been running a survey the last few weeks, and uh, we uh, determined a winner uh, of the John Cena DVD, which I tossed over there so I can make sure it goes. So out. did I win? I uh, no, no, Mike. I don't think you oh. qualified. No. No, but actually, uh, emailer and comment, commenter extraordinaire, just sorry, Dustin uh, actually won uh, the random picking of the numbers. Uh, so he'll be receiving that uh, John Cena My Life DVD, uh, which he says his kids are going to love. Uh, so awesome. Uh, so thanks again. It's not too late. If you do want to submit and let us know your opinion, you can go to bit.ly slash mayhem survey bit.ly slash mayhem survey we, we're going to leave it open and everything uh if you want to give your opinion uh, uh just go ahead and do that uh or you know any other way if you want to know let us know about shows on the comments if you're watching the video here on youtube if you're uh, on itunes let us know there as well on uh, the twitter the facebook the google plus um we're listening and we do uh kind of react and try to respond and think about and consider uh, a lot of a lot of that kind of stuff. Some of the stuff we're doing is is definitely in a little bit of reaction to what you guys are saying, or at least considering it um, uh, more often than not, right, guys? I mean, we've, we've had some, some pretty serious discussions from the survey, so yeah, definitely. So, um, and with that, we are going to one of those new things. Uh, we had a uh, Riz come out again. IWC again. I, Chachi, I uh, we're we're so busy doing these shows. Uh, I don't think it's fair for us to really do reviews of the show that we are producing. Uh, so I, I wanted to get somebody else from the shows out to these local ones uh, to get an idea and also have a chance to go around with the camera and try to snag interviews with some of these guys. We're around wrestlers so often, but we don't get to make that connection because we're so busy on the night of the show and just somebody to be there to represent uh, the podcast and everything. So here's one with our uh, uh, a couple of Brits that were in town and uh, a little bit of a surprise they got in the form of Paul London. Good. All right, guys, I'm here with uh, Pete Dunn and, and Mark Andrews. Uh, they were in the IWC uh, Retro Reunion show. Uh, thank you guys for coming here. Is this your first time in America wrestling professionally here? It's uh, the second time for both of us. I wrestled two years ago for Chikara in Philadelphia. Um, and you wrestled? I wrestled in uh, Los Angeles last year in November mm -hmm. and uh, that was part of like it was like a convention for deaf people it was really strange oh, but yeah, really cool yeah, so. yeah so it was just like inside for both of us is there like any comparison to England and America that in their style of it's, it's fairly similar it's yeah it's fairly similar, similar. like yeah. obviously WWE is kind of the uh, it's, it's like the top level yeah it's the top yeah. in England as well you know, it's world yeah. wrestling entertainment it's not just mm -hmm. an American thing so like that definitely has an influence on on American and British wrestling, but there's still like a basis of chain wrestling in England on yeah. the World Sport Days, right. which we've noticed we have from our training. That so the styles are slightly different, but it's kind of cool because it means we have to adapt slightly as well. Whereas like uh, you know a lot of the stuff we learn back home is is very chain wrestling based and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and out here that's less focused on. But um, yeah, like mainly it's, it's pretty similar because a lot of the British stuff kind of imitates the American stuff because right. you know because of WWE being the top platform around the world and it, that's based in kind of mainly in America. Mm -hmm. So you know we take a lot of inspiration from that back home as well. And in in this show today, you were supposed to face uh, WAR. We are rock stars. 
uh, but Aiden Vale uh, did in suffer an injury beforehand. Uh, so you guys got to face Paul London. Yeah. So how did that? Did you guys ever wrestle him before, or did you? Did you know that, um, notice anything? Neither of us have wrestled no? Paul London before, but I wrestled Brian how was Kendrick, the experience? Yeah. Yeah. Like his partner, like mm -hmm. you know, a few months ago, and um, it was great. I mean, like we were both really looking forward to the match with uh, mm -hmm. We Are Rock Stars. Yeah, we were told by so many people that Aiden's really good, so we yeah. were quite excited for it, and then like. As, it as unfortunate as, it, as his injury is, like... Mm -hmm. It turned out good for us as well, yeah, because we got so. to go in the ring with, you know, Paul London, who's yeah. you know, been kind of a, a big inspiration for, for me and probably for yeah, you as well, yeah. you know, and like... Um, so, you know, it had its silver lining, obviously, you know, and it was a great experience to go in there with him. Oh, and cool. with Jordan as well. You oh, know, yeah. It was a really, really fun match, and it was just, yeah, a good time. All right, we have one more question. Now, this is, this is uh, what we like to call our big question that we ask everybody who comes on our show. This is really tr this is really hard. I want you to put it on your thinking caps. Get ready for this one. If you were a vegetable, what kind of vegetable would you be, and why? Um, all right, let's think. Well, if I was a carrot, could I see in the dark? Because you know, if you eat carrots, you can see in the dark. You can be whatever you want. If that was the case, maybe a carrot because I could see in the dark. All right, that's um, good. This guy's a potato though because he's so stiff. But <laughs> 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 any any response to that I one or that was a good line? Don't be no offended. comment. <laughs> no comment. This <laughs> guy, carrot over here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. All right. It, we got it. So thank you guys for coming to IWC. Uh, I thank hope we see you there. again. You guys are awesome. Yeah, cheers, uh, Cenk, cheers. Thank you guys and thank you for joining us. That was a spectacular interview with uh, Mark Andrews and Pete Dunn. And now it's time to talk to the man. More about IWC, who conducted that interview. Riz, how was Retro Reunion? First of all, that was one of the worst introductions I have ever received. <laughs> now, that I'm, now that I am an interviewer for Sorgatron Media, I should earn some more oh, damn Oh, you're big time so, now. That's how it happened. Yes, I am. <sighs> But yeah, uh, since I'm not going to get that uh, that stellar introduction by Wrestle Bitch over there, um, I did see the uh, retro reunion as Eamon was talking about, of course, and I got to tell you, it was one of the better shows I've seen in a while. Okay, like, and and that's saying much because I don't go out that often. To see shows, <laughs> so can sorg. You got me outside. Okay. Uh, no, but seriously, um, the the first of all, I gotta say, Paul London blow blew my mind. Uh, if he opened the show, left for B P W uh, X, and G then went or no. X? No, okay. shut your mouth. I, didn't, I thought I didn't know it was a PWX. And then he went to Prime Wrestling. Oh, okay. Three shows in two days. That man is a monster. Uh, Not to mention, he, he did a I, seminar in Cleveland the night before. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is something about watching him work in the ring. is It's, it's fantastic. Uh, but going to the matches itself, um, Aiden, there was a lot of injuries and no-shows. Uh, Chuck did come out and explain, like, uh, Aiden Vale got hurt, who was replaced by Paul, Paul London for We Are Rockstars, who took on the British dudes and won. And uh, Egotistico Fantastic. Uh, Whatever his name is, you get this to go fantastico. It doesn't matter because he no show. <laughs> well, it, it not only did he no show, he did text Chuck apparently the day no, before. He, he texts Chuck once. Yeah. And then nothing. Yeah. So good for him. Yeah. Uh, and, and, so and, he's and really I know, egotistical, average though. Yeah, and all around, but, it did feel like the show came out better than advertised. Yes, because of because of the because of the card subject to change, you still had you still have facade. 
<laughs> you still had we. Uh, who's the other guy in We, we Are Rock, rock Stars? Jordan team? Lennox. Yeah. Or Jordan yeah. Lennox. You had him. And you also had the first time ever in Pittsburgh, Shima Zion versus uh, Facade. And it was that, that match blew my mind. It was, I, it was, it was great. And another match that was pretty good too. Uh, my new best friend, Dalton Castle, got, is is getting his rematch with uh, John McChesney after beating Dennis Gregory. Who, I, who, who, when I saw those two wrestle, they, they are like mere images of each other. Kind of. And here's why. They both are loud wrestlers. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't need a microphone to talk. Am I correct, Sword? We're talking about Fish and McChesney? No, 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 no. I'll I'll get to Fish and McChesney in a little bit. Okay. I'm talking about Castle and uh, Gregory. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're definitely they're definitely very loud. Uh, <laughs> uh, you you ha- you have to turn the mic up, and unfortunately, I wish we had better ambient <clears throat> mics on everything to catch all of it. And usually, the um, announcers are reacting to it. There was one part in the match, in the beginning of the match, where Don Castle points to Dennis Gregory and says. He made me twerk. Just can let that sink in there. Uh, and which responded at the end of the night, at the end of the, of the match, uh, Dalton Castle was upside down twerking himself. Am I, I, I again, am I wrong on that, on that statement, Sword? No, no, that's about right. All right. And, uh, there was not one bad match on that card. Mm-hmm. And also, Jimmy Corderas was there, mm-hmm. who ate a soft pretzel. <laughs> Very I, nice. That, that is all you need delicious. to know. This, this, uh, but he, he did referee a match. Uh, which match? It was a Gregory Dalton one, I believe. Oh, the Gregory Dalton one, yeah. Yeah, that's right, because he said, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, but going back to Fish and McChesney, mm-hmm. Bobby Fish is amazing. He is, he, he's awesome. Uh, for, he, he, came, he came out to a swing version of uh, Like a Virgin. Very nice. Uh, and the match itself... I thought it was just going to be, you know, finger poke of doom, one, two, three, done. But the two put on an awesome match. And it showed that John McChesney is one of the bright futures in this wrestling game. Mm hmm. Uh, you know, it always impresses me. I always hate the uh, the situations where like the, the the heel goes out and they're talking and wasting time and everything. But when it involves Bobby Fish and when Bobby Fish was teaming with McChesney and everything, mm-hmm. it's always entertaining. Again, kind of the sa- same same as your uh, Castle and, and Dennis Gregory before, where they're talking with the mm-hmm. crowd. It, it's just that talking moment brings the fans in mm-hmm. to that match and makes them part of it Mm -hmm. and that i can't like i said i can't think of a bad match on that show yeah and that and again that is without egotistico fantastica Mm -hmm. that is without aiden vale that's without there's another there was a third one who was injured i forget who that was oh jimmy nuts got hurt during during uh their tag match jimmy Uh, nuts yeah he was uh the returning arrow form which is uh flimp kendrick Mm -hmm. and i Sorry, Lewis Linden. Linden. Lewis Linden. Thank you, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, they, they, uh, one of the guys flipped out on top of him. We actually completely missed it on the cameras. It was so fast, uh, mm-hmm. and we had no idea it was coming. Uh, and I think he caught him wrong and put all the oh, yeah, on one that's knee. Right. Uh, so I know he was seeing a doctor, and he was, it looked like on on his Facebook he said he was having trouble standing on it the next day. So, but mm-hmm. awesome show. And, and hey, we. Brilliant, and we're, gonna, and we're gonna have some fun interviews coming up 
from that. Uh, Sorg, yeah. can I just say thank you for putting me on this team, on that team for this show? No problem, man. I would have probably not gone to this show, mm -hmm. and now I would regret it if I didn't. Go. <laughs> so awesome. buy it on SorgatronMedia.com. Yes, they'll be up. Buy shortly. it when you come in at, uh, uh, at any IWC show. Mm -hmm. Buy it if we buy a table. Buy it on a box. Buy it with a fox. Jeez. <laughs> buy it on a boat. Watch it with a goat. Awesome. Well, also, you know, there's also I I get to talk about this one because I actually wasn't involved with this show. I, I was I was simply there uh, to mm -hmm. shoot some interviews uh, for another project. Uh, but Resolution again, we talked about it in the past, not at the Nautica like it has been in the past. So it didn't have. Uh, I don't think it had as big of a feel as it has because of the venue change. Uh, but I think it's scheduling. I don't know what all went into it being this late in the season. Obviously, they're not going to have it outside at the Nautica in the middle of October. Uh, it would be ridiculous right now. Uh, so I was at this complex over in, whoops, wrong way, uh, over in Parma, Ohio. And there's a shot at the end of the show with John, uh, Johnny Gargano actually thanking everybody. And there's like half the roster out there with him. Uh, actually, I think he invited the entire roster out there. Uh, a great show. Uh, a lot of buildup. Again, stuff I hadn't been following leading up to it. But they had a big kind of uh, war for the company kind of thing. At best, two out of three of the matches. Uh, respect to Zach Gowan and Greg Greg Iron, the handicapped heroes, coming out to the weird back song from the Ghostbusters 2 soundtrack. Um, that that was pretty cool. Uh, so first half was mostly that situation. Second half, uh, and this was on iPay-Per-View, and you actually can still go get it. Information's over at primewrestling.com. I recommend it. It was a really good match. Again, Johnny McChess, or sorry, Johnny Gargano against Paul London. Uh, if you liked what you saw in that, that uh, opening match there at IWC, you would love how this is and i really wish we could get our hands on being able to see uh the london versus gory one but i last i checked pwx isn't very good about the videos they have tv but it's not really that great uh last i knew i don't know if anything's been updated since um but uh a killer match rhino was there in a in the main event against uh, uh crimson uh a, a classic hardcore match actually uh so it was nice to see i got a really interesting picture <laughs> You guys probably get a kick out of this. I know I did. Uh, where uh, you ever get like a hardcore match in one corner and girl one corner of a picture and girls volleyball in the other? Because mm. that's what's happening there. Um, I, yeah, I guess one of the practices had to start or something out off. That's why they have them turned off. But uh, but no, really great show. Prime Wrestling is is definitely a, a one of the premier companies uh, in the area. Uh, and and and. and they do a lot to make things feel big. Um, you know, we talk about how TNA has the problem making things feel big and special. I think IWC Prime Wrestling, and that's why we keep going back to it because it does feel like a big thing. So I know I know you wanted me to go to uh, a re resolution before. Yeah. When it was outside. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And but was bummed because I didn't go because mm -hmm. of all the things that happened. And I would have wanted to go if I, if hindsight was twenty twenty. I do recommend. Uh, I believe all, if most, if not all, of the resolutions should be available through Prime Wrestling or Smartmark Video, uh, and they're all really, really good super cards. If if you ever want to go back for them. Uh, now, hmm. Eamon, what's going on in your neck of the woods? Actually, I saw a video about what's going on in your neck of the woods. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, stuff happened this weekend. Uh, fun stuff. Uh, I was at three events this weekend because I'm crazy. And yes, Texas Wrestling are. is apparently something. Uh, but no, I went to uh, Friday and Saturday. I went to the two uh, NWA New Japan Pro Wrestling Super Shows, oh, the cool. Invasion events, uh, in Humble, Texas, uh, right outside of Houston, and then in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, those were pretty spectacular. You mentioned uh, uh, getting to see a hardcore match right next to a girls' volleyball game, Sorg. Yeah. I went to a wrestling show. On Friday, that had Jushin Thunder Liger in one uh, room. The other room had a quinceanera. A what? A quinceanera. It's a traditional... 16th birthday party. 15. Yes, 15. Whatever. It's a, How do you guys whatever. It's a Texas thing. It's a Texas thing. No. It's a Mexican thing. It's a sweet 15th birthday party from for Mexican girls. Oh. And you learn... Sorg learns something new every day. Hey. Uh, but yeah, 
Uh, no, that was super fun because uh, I got to meet Jushin Thunder Liger, and that was insane. Um, all the talent was awesome uh, from New Japan Pro Wrestling. They got flown in. Uh, there was a really great sh- uh, both nights of uh, shows for uh, NWA Houston and NWA Brandy Outlaw Wrestling. I had a fun time. I uh, got to uh, hang with a lot of cool people and just you know cheer for wrestling, and it was it was great <laughs> stuff. And there you see the photo with uh... – <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Just, just looking at that and seeing how uncomfortably you're posing right there. Oh, absolutely. And then what do I realizing do with my hands? everybody's pointing at me. Who do I point to? Exactly. <laughs> and why is this no, random? No. Why is this random table hanging out in front of you guys? Because that's where they were. Because that's a Japanese table. Crop that, break. crop that shit down. Yeah, but no. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm was intimidated because you know Japanese legends are like inches away from me and it was it was pretty crazy it was awesome it was a really awesome time you didn't have enough hands to jerk him off i i couldn't if i did if i wanted to i couldn't get through the suit come on wow that, that turned weird all right moving on please M- moving on and then on sunday before i talk about more about jerking off japanese wrestling legends um I went to uh, Anarchy Championship Wrestling's October event, Beyond Good and Evil, their Halloween show. That was a really fun show. Uh, a lot of great wrestling on that show. Uh, ACH and Davey Vega had a phenomenal contest that really was a match of the year candidate. Uh, a lot of really interesting stuff happening in ACW. Uh, they got a couple events coming up in November. They will be a part of Fun 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 Fest, which is the big music, comedy, and uh, other crazy stuff festival that happens in Austin, Texas. Uh, three nights. Uh, it should be really awesome stuff. Uh, and then they also have the Lone Star Classic, which is their big tournament that they hold every year, uh, also in November. So there's tons of stuff going on, and if you want to check them out and go support them, you can go to anarchychampionshipwrestling.com to get more information on them. But let's not talk about the stuff that we are a part of anymore. Damon, or did you dress going up? To. I'm sorry? Did you dress up for that show? Uh, I did not, because I am Why not? Poor. <laughs> Why not? Costumes are expensive. Haven't you seen they're my very budget ninja costume? Costumes I've been are not and honestly, your creative I, and I will say there is an Everybody awesome photo. There is an awesome photo somewhere on my Facebook page that maybe Thor can find uh, of me with a costume that I think stole the night, which was uh, Brandon Stroud's Zeb Coulter outfit, which was phenomenal. Well, I got. I I have to disagree. I at the IWC show. There was two guys dressed up, two very large men. One was dressed up as the Macho Man. Mm. It not, didn't really look like the Macho Man very well. But the other guy that was there was dressed as Psycho Sid. Mm. He had short shorts and everything. Mm. Blonde wig, Sid shirt, jean jacket. Yeah, jean jacket and very, very, very short shorts. By the way, here's a picture of the Zeb Coulter uh, costume if you're on video. Okay, that wins. And if you see the <laughs> caption, it says, I'm ecstatic and also racially intimidated. Yes, racially you are. Racially intimidated. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty great. But yeah, uh, so besides that stuff, there are shows that are happening this weekend that I think you should check out. Cool. Um, I, and it's going to be some really big stuff. I know there was a lot of indie wrestling events this weekend, besides the ones we talked about even. Shimmer had tapings. Uh, there was tons of, like I meant, uh, Jess mentioned that she went to PWG. So there was tons of stuff that happened last weekend. This weekend, there's going to be some great stuff, too. Uh, Ring of Honor is holding their Glory by Honor 12 event in Chicago Ridge, Illinois, on October 26th, which is Saturday. Uh, they're having a big uh, Champions versus All-Stars eight-man tag match. This should be very fun. Uh, a lot of great uh, stuff on that card. If you want more information on that, you can go to ROHwrestling.com. And if you're in the Chicago area, go check them out. Go support Ring of Honor Wrestling. Um, and also, if you're not in the Midwest area, but you are in the South, particularly Florida, uh, Shine Wrestling is holding an event October 25th in Ybor City, Florida at the Orpheum. Uh, should be really fun stuff. A lot of the talent that was at Shimmer this past weekend will also be at Shine, uh, including a lot of the Japanese talent. The main event, Rain defending Giant Championship against Hiroyo Matsumoto, which should be very fun. 
Uh, there's a lot of great talent, really stacked cards for that event. So if you want more information on that to get tickets or also to order the iPay-Per-View for this event, you can go to ShineWrestling.com and go support them. So, yeah, there's wrestling happening all over the independent wrestling world. And I do want to uh, also mention, if you are in an area where indie wrestling is happening, if you go to indie wrestling shows, if you found out about an indie wrestling show and you think that we should talk about it here on the Indie Minute, send that information for the indie wrestling show to Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, and we'll talk about it on the show. Excellent. And in the meantime, other ways you can get a hold of the show, we got a great Mayhem Show app, WMS Gold, on your Mayhem, I'm sorry, on your iOS store, newly updated iOS store, and uh, 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 Amazon App Store for your Android device. Bam. Quick access to all the episodes uh, of the Mayhem oh. Show proper. What? Don't show that. Don't show that one? Oh, it, okay, it crashes sometimes on the Android. A lot Where's of things seem to crash on the Android. Um, yes, I did. Okay. But uh, also, uh, contact, you pull it up there, and I got follow us on Twitter, visit us on Facebook. Uh, we got email a show, call a show, visit the website, all that right there. Here, there's a tr- troubleshooting button. But all thanks to our friends over at Wizard Media and Libsyn. Uh, Mad Mike's got it there on a Mac Mini. I got it here on the iPhone 5S. Uh, I also have a version of it running on my Nexus 7 na- Android tablet as well. And I believe, Riz, you're running Android as well. Uh, I am so running Android. So you check it out, $1.99, and there's bonus content, stuff we don't air anywhere else that you can get exclusively to watch on your device. Uh, so with that, let's go take a peek on a little preview of what exactly is coming up this week on Gold. And a little look back a couple weeks ago, RWA Bloody Harvest 5 for the crazy TLC match. And we'll be right back with Remember When. Daily Grace did a video with Pete Holmes. Who did it? Wait, who did it? Oh. Grace Helbig. Grace oh, Helbig. The worst, oh, mean... worst person in the world. With your favorite person in the world. I am a trooper, sir. Uh, that that the uh, the RJ and Dalton interview was again. You could, you could tell that I didn't know that I was RJ until like the very end. <sighs> Katy Perry's you, release party. Are you high right up right now, Eamon? Oh, no, I'm gonna doing. be amazing. This is me, like the front under the sun rose. I pay the read, but the mother been the one chose. Before the day break, I see the horn blow. Hey guys, we're back, and uh, there was a little footage. If you want to uh, check out that RWA Bloody Harvest 5 over at sorgatronmedia.com slash store, you can pick it up digital download and DVD as usual. Um, and, of course, music by our friend at basicsickness.com. You can go check out all that stuff there. Uh, good good friend of the show here in Pittsburgh. Uh, so I, I, this week, I, I caught the wrap-up here. You guys talking about Bound for Glory. Uh, and whether you think it or not, in the past, we know Battle for Glory has, in pay-per-views in general, big ones for TNA have seemed to have dropped the ball at closing things, at, at uh, uh, not creating so much WrestleMania moments for TNA. So I, I, I thought we'd go back and look at when WrestleMania failed to create a WrestleMania moment for you. So so uh, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that in this week's Remember When? This is the part where help is supposed to sing, but it's not here. So we fill in time for the people that are listening to us in audio. Wow, that, that is horrible. I'm not even go back through the, all the rest of that. That was ridiculous. Um, so with that, <laughs> but no, uh, we you know, we're sort of like, what? What if you? It's the biggest show of the year. And then uh, they 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 drop the ball. You know, we talk about closure. WrestleMania should have something that's a moment that ends uh, some feud, something you remember it. But whenever they drop the ball, I, 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 more recently I can remember. Uh, I was a little put off by the fact that Miz and John Cena, which had such great build and and everything, and had the involvement. Okay, yes, with The Rock, but I hated that we had a 
WrestleMania match in this decade that ended first with a was it a double DQ a count out I think double they, count out double count, count out double count out because they like they smashed through the barricade I believe. Um, well, yeah, and Miz got a legit concussion too. I think oh, that yeah. had something to do with okay, it. Okay, okay, and that might be it too. Uh, but but still, it still led to a weird moment, right? Uh, Rock comes out, restarts the match, and then of course screws over John Cena. Um, really left a bad taste in my mouth for that year. Uh, of course, it did lead to uh, two of you know arguably some of the greatest matches uh, with Rock and Cena the next two years after, and the <laughs> biggest uh, key, the, keyword oh, arguably. Uh, yeah, that's why I said that. That's why I said it. But if not, the, I know. at least on paper, the biggest matches in build and uh, 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 and everything. Um, but uh, what do you think, Eamon? What, what would be one of yours uh, kind of a drop the ball moments, uh, anti WrestleMania mem- mem- memory? The closest one I could think of is actually not far off from that one. Uh, it was WrestleMania 25, uh, and it was the main event for that show which was Triple H versus Randy Orton for the WWE Championship. And it's not solely because of the people in the match. Uh, for those that remember that feud, it involved <laughs> stuff like home invasions and Randy Orton making out with an unconscious Stephanie McMahon as uh, Triple H was handcuffed to a ring post. Hmm. And a lot of violence. And right before the show, they instituted a rule where if Triple H got himself counted out or disqualified, he would lose the WWE championship. So he made sure he didn't get counted out or disqualified. Not to mention, which that match started off with Triple H hitting a pedigree and Randy Orton hitting an RKO within the first three minutes of the match. Wow. True that. But also just the idea that the everything that this feud was built upon and then Triple H would just be like, I care more about keeping my championship yeah. than avenging all the other stuff. Yeah, It really defeated anything that they were going to do with that storyline. Mm-hmm. And I do not understand why they did it whatsoever. It still kind of baffles me. So, Rance. Goldberg and Brock Lesnar. Damn it. Why start, Damn it. Why start anywhere else? This is true. That was supposed to be the biggest match of WrestleMania 20. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to be big guy versus big guy. It was supposed to be one of the better matches that ever in, in the WWE. And, of course, everybody knows what happened. Uh, first, I think Goldberg just wanted to leave. Mm-hmm. And then Brock Lesnar decided, hey, I'm going to go try for the NFL. And failed. <laughs> and then he went to UFC, and now he's back in WWE. From time so, on. so, yeah. The, the, the fact is, you can't say any other match in WrestleMania history came down so hard than WrestleMania 20, Goldberg, and Lesnar. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. What about you, Mad Mike? Of Since course you go to me after Riz once taken. stole mine. Uh-huh. Bam. <sighs> Fuck you, Riz. Um, okay, you know what? Um, in keeping with the Triple H theme, uh, Triple H Booker T. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Triple H Booker T. Kind of wish because, that was better. Like, it's fine if you squash Scott Steiner at a Royal Rumble. That's fine. It's the Rumble. No one expects the title to change hands or anyway. Yeah. But WrestleMania is where you're supposed to have a good guy triumph over evil. Instead, Booker T was just racially slandered, called a criminal, and he was never heard from again until he won the King of the Ring. King like, Booker. Three years later. Yeah, King Booker. So, yeah, that really, like... What were we supposed to learn from that one? <laughs> that, that, that black people suck? I don't know. I don't know what Triple H was trying to teach us with that. What about you, Bobby? Uh, mine would be from WrestleMania 27, Dan O'Brien versus Sheamus, the 18 seconds match. 
Fuck yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it created... It, <laughs> sorry, AJ. It created the Daniel Bryan we know and love today, but it, it just wasn't... For all the build that that match did have, like, Daniel Bryan's, like, first shot and stuff, it's just... I don't know. But see, I think that's perfect, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know what it did, but the match itself was kind of a letdown. And at, at the time, I mean, remember, we were, like, going into that, and, and there was a backlash. Mm-hmm. Like, pe- weren't people chanting no at the rest of the, or Brian at, at the rest of the show? Well, yeah, yeah, but if they didn't do that, if Sheamus and Brian just had, like, a 10-man match mm-hmm. and, and Brian lost, Daniel Bryan would not be a main eventer right now. So well, yeah, but I'm saying for that match at that time, it was a letdown. Yeah. It was, it was, I'm not I don't saying think it, it didn't help any, Daniel Bryan in the long run, but it was a letdown at the time. I don't think they expected it to happen. Mm-hmm. I don't think they expected that blow up to happen. So, yeah. And we have, I believe we have AJ online. Are you there? Bo Diggity is here, children. Uh, Yay. Tell us. <laughs> he's, he's, he's mobile, so uh, yeah, this will be interesting. Uh, I. No, 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 no. I would put on video, but it's very dark because I'm in my car right now, which is where I spend a good portion of my life. I've driven 381 miles a day. I'm going video list for this because I'm doing this for the audio listeners. I'm here for you, audio listeners. <laughs> Nobody can see me. We, no one. We did play both of your voicemails earlier. One by accident. Good. One by accident. Good. Was it the was it the one where I said just swear words? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. I thought I was. I was. I was. Uh, we were listening. In the, I was going to skip that one, but they're they're. AJ, glad. I insisted we listen to it, so we're going to skip it. He did. Listen, I was in a fun state of mind when I when I called, and I just felt like being playful, and we went with it. <laughs> Getting right. to I remember when. I guess I, I missed the part where, where, where I, I don't remember what we're remembering, but I'm going with shit salad matches. Is that what we're going with here? Yeah, WrestleMania. WrestleMania. WrestleMania moments. Yeah. Worst WrestleMania moments. I'm going to go with JR to Toga at WrestleMania 9. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we said moments, not matches. So That's true. JR to Toga. First, first job at the game. And that wonderful gentleman from Oklahoma had to put on a fucking bed sheet. That's not, that's not nice. But AJ, that had to be comfortable. That happened to everybody there. No, also, no. The they were outside in Vegas heat. That had to be really comfortable as opposed oh, yeah. to wearing a tight suit. Listen, I got to be really honest. Jim Ross has never been a slender gentleman. He was probably a sweaty mess and was hoping the suit would catch him. He's <laughs> from Oklahoma. Yeah, but it was, it was no it was no worse than my runner up that I if somebody would have taken mine. Uh Big Show versus Aki Bono. Oh, <laughs> oh twenty one. Diaper time, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I also yeah. I would also uh like to point out uh let's see here. Same WrestleMania, Giant Gonzalez versus Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Just throw uh, in everything. Oh, Mexican guy in a body suit. I can, Green you know, classic match to me. WrestleMania, I, you know, WrestleMania Nine holds a special place in my heart. Um, but you're right. You're right. It holds a special place in mine too. So you're right. I that mean, was, sorry, 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 weird, weird going yeah. finish. Uh, weird giant Gonzalez finish. Uh, weird title match finish. Uh, yeah. So, so, uh, you mentioned about how there was. You mentioned about how there was like a double count out uh, in the one match you mentioned from twenty seven. That show had like three count outs. <laughs> in WrestleMania, or like three like fucked up finishes. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, true. Wait, were you talking about nine or twenty seven? Nine. nine. Yeah, it did. It did, which is really rare for that that age. You know, that time. You know that they would do that. So, ah, eh. eh. Well, it was still a good WrestleMania. It had the best announcing team in the world. JR, Randy Savage, and Bobby Heenan. I defy true. you to come up with a better three man team. You're right. It had the best announce team. It just had shit for everything else. <laughs> I don't care. It's still amazing. Oh, man. Better than WrestleMania 11. 
What? Better than WrestleMania 11. Was that the uh, the that was Bam Bam. guy and Bam Bam Bigelow? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so with the, hey, let us know what's your worst WrestleMania moment or whatever other moment, uh, uh, horrible payoff moment uh, at Mayhem Show on Twitter, uh, Facebook, Google Plus, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, hey, you know we got T-shirts. We got yeah, T-shirts. We do. You got stacks and stacks. You buy a merch stack and put it around and on your body. Maybe cover your penis with it if you're naked. Hey, like hey, 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 yeah. Tell them about the T-shirts. All right, so we got some T-shirts. We got the Good Times of Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com T-shirt, designed by the wonderful, tremendously talented, and overall good, handsome gentleman Alexander Cars. It look like the Good Times for Fast Times Race by High logo. That one's fantastic. We have the Property of Mayhem logo uh, shirt, which I believe Sword you got one of those. Oh yeah, I got two. I got one of each. And we also have the WMS logo classic logo just let you know what the, just let you know what the brand's like we got those three t-shirts you should go to pro wrestling tees.com slash mayhem show wms slash wms and go buy these t-shirts put them on your body support the mayhem show because if you support the mayhem show on pro wrestling tees.com slash wms we'll get to design more of them well, Alex will. Alex is really talented with Photoshop. The rest of us, Bobby, though, Bobby's very talented at Photoshop. Mm -hmm. I'll have you know. I'll have you know. Um, but I, I'm not. And neither, I, so are you all right with Photoshop? Or are you with Photoshop? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm a little rusty, but I'm all right with the Photoshop. I'm, I'm, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I know I know my way around, AJ. I know my okay. way around America. I know my way around the Carolinas, people. But anyways. I, I just want to let you know that if the more you support this, the more t-shirts we can make, the more fun we can have with this. So please, go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS, buy our t-shirts. And also, while you're there, take a look at some of the other wrestlers. I believe Goldust has a t-shirt, Colt Cabana has got some t-shirts, uh, ACH might have some t-shirts on there. Does, Russell does. Fan does ACH have t-shirts there? DDP Yoga. DDP does. Hey, listen, all we have to do is go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS, and then while you're in there, just like, buy our stuff first. Make sure that our stuff is first. Like, in your cart, it should be Mayhem Show shirts first. Then you could go buy DDP shirts and get your yoga on. I'm not flexible, and it's probably because I don't do DDP yoga. Mm -hmm. So please, ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS, buy our stuff, support the Mayhem Show, back to use Sorgatron. Thank you, AJ, for that. Uh, so, let's get into the rest of the discussion. Sure. Yes? Chris Jericho has a web series coming out. Oh? I was just scanning through um, Facebook, and I see a video what called, is it? But I'm Chris Jericho. Oh, man. I wonder if it's from the same people that did uh, John Davis buys a sex robot. I don't know. I, I hope, hope so. it sex is. Sex robot. Sex robot. I hope so. It was a <laughs> tremendous <laughs> series. And uh, and you don't get to see Chris Jericho share, swear too often or talk about uh, disgusting sex topics. And oh, my God. What does Sorry. he want? Sorry, this looks magical. Does it? I'm going to put it in the doc. Sex. It is in the doc. It looks magic. So, I mean... It, I, I love Jericho because he I always... was the wrestling oh. champion of the world. And he's the best in the world at what he does. Wow. I love your wrestling. Until I lost it all. I used to be a professional wrestler. You're not wrestling anymore. You got fired from wrestling, right? You used to look good. I hate you. Told you he has brain damage. Oh, that's I awesome. don't have brain damage. Now I'm starting over. So and that's why like, like Chris Jericho is always working on something, right? And... Uh, and I think he definitely got kind of introduced to it with this uh, John Davis sex robot series. Uh, so good for him. How far are you willing to go? What? It's still playing in the background. It looks amazing. Yep. Uh, so go check that out. It's at Action TV. Um, is this a. But I'm Chris Jericho. Where it's going to be? The series premiere is October 29th. Okay. So. This is a preview. Like. Uh, visit but I'm Chris Jericho dot com to catch it. So let's go check that site out and see what we need to do there. Um, awesome. <laughs> oh, God, I just, you know that I just survived death. 
Are you there was a team? giant spider crawling on the inside of my windshield, and I killed him. <laughs> so I am a murderer of the AJ, highest grade. AJ, do you have superpowers now? It didn't bite me. You didn't answer my question. And if it did, I would just, I would just have some really tiny punctures to march. Okay. Hmm. I, I, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. I don't have superpowers or anything like that. I'm, I'm good. Um, let's continue the show. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Raw, Bound for Glory. Do we want to touch on Bound for Glory? You guys gave an hour and a half to the show. We touched on it briefly yeah, earlier. It an hour and a half? All right, all right. It was an Here, hour and a half. Yeah, that you, was an hour oh, and a half. Yeah, you oh, guys, I'm really sorry. <laughs> yeah, we, I am terribly sorry that we did an hour and a half talking. I don't half, think I felt. That's literally half the show. The I, actual no, no, wrestling no, no. television program. And somehow, like, 100 people have watched this thing. So uh, it's working. Um, That's what we do, Sorg. It, That's what we do. It was, um, and like I said, Dustin was on the show uh, in email form uh, talking about, there it is, it's an hour and, I believe, 37, 37, 32 minutes. Uh, I knew it was going long. I didn't realize it was that long. Did you guys finish up at 4 a.m.? Yeah, I'm just like, when did you guys, this thing ended at 11. What what did you do? Uh, I mean, well. I'm like, okay, I'll listen listen to this thing at work the next day. Uh, But you guys did pro-con each of you, all three of you, uh, for the entire pay-per-view, including the the pre-show. I was impressed. And I may not have to watch the pay-per-view now. I would like to thank Dustin for that idea. What's that? I would watch the knockouts match. Riz Riz gets credit for the pros and cons thing because... We talked about how we're always negative about uh, TNA. Yeah. And so we decided to not be negative about TNA. Well, I also went on the Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, theme of what we were doing for the for the Mayhem Show when we used to talk about TNA. Yeah. <clears throat> when you we say, say one good place place before you one can bad complain, thing. Yes. one thing to change. Yeah. Right, and we yeah. just implied that to so, what we saw today on uh, that that night, and it worked. So, if you want to so, hear about Bound for Glory, go to our YouTube page and watch it there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we don't need to talk about it here. There's only one other thing TNA related I do want to mention because we okay, didn't get on. um the web series of the road trip of Eric Young and Justin Park. I still haven't watched it. It is phenomenal. It is fantastic. Each video is about four minutes long. There's like ten videos. Just watch it. Watch it instead of Impact if you like. You'll probably have a better time doing it. It's it, it's just really, really good. I mean, Joseph Park and Eric Young drive in a car and reenact the ADJ Styles Dixie Carter angle with action figures. I pull up a clip, but we got we almost got pulled last time we showed TNA on here. Fuck them. <laughs> We're giving sure. them free press. They sure. should love it. Yeah, it was it was rough. Um, yeah. Uh, so TNA happened. We'll see what happens. We talked enough about that earlier in the show, and for an hour and a half on Sunday night. Uh, so with that, uh, I also want to give a shout out to to uh, Leg Kick TKO and Man Mike. You did a really good concept. Caught him drinking. Caught him drinking. During the show, there he is. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. I didn't look over first. It's okay. Well, it's Seltzer, called. boys and girls, uh, living the CM Punk lifestyle right now, which just, I was not doing during the Ready to Rumble. <laughs> so yeah, give me a minute. See. So you guys did a Ready to. I did not get a chance. I want to get the movie. Uh, I, I listened to your setup for it, but I want to get the movie so I can line it up. Tell people what you guys are doing over there. Well, um, I, I personally own Ready to Rumble because sorry, I am fantastic. And um, our good friend, like Kick DKO, bought the movie on YouTube for, I believe, she said two ninety nine, which is way less than I purchased for it when it first came out. And um, we both turned the movie on at the same time, and we had a nice little two-hour discussion about Ready to Rumble. During the Royal Rumble. And this is something that you can sync up. And do a kind of a riff tracks kind of thing on top of it, right? A mystery science theater yes. kind of thing as you watch it. Um, have you got any response from it yet? Um, people have enjoyed it. 
people have enjoyed it. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. So and so, go check this. Go, go try it. If you have it for Rumble, if you can rent it or something, I listen to it across if you like this humor uh, and especially the stuff that uh, Leg Kick's been bringing to the show uh, along with Matt, Mad Mike. Uh, go check and it we out. And we're thinking about doing stuff for more re- either wrestling-related movies mm-hmm. or maybe old pay-per-views mm-hmm. or what I think might be the best thing ever, old Mayhem shows. You're going to commentate over an audio podcast? Yes. That could get confusing, but we'll see. Where yes. It goes. Um, all right. All right. <laughs> Let, hey, try it. That's what the internet's for, right? And, I, and then, I think if we did, I think if we got some people, we got a little liquored up and we did live commentary over like the five year anniversary show, that would be fun. Hmm. Hmm. Or, or you guys talking about the old ones before you were around. That could be fun too. I, it's enough about <laughs> us. Enough about us. Let's talk about uh, what what happened on Raw last night, guys. Let's see, and then we'll we'll head into a little bit of how in a cell. Do our picks real quick. Go to, run down the card. Actually, or should we just run into the card and and we'll probably cover Raw along with that, huh? Yes. Mm-hmm. Let, let us do that. Sir. First of all, like yeah, there's a good point. Where the hell did Big Show get that truck? It was a monster truck. You don't. According to Michael Cole. You don't. Are you guys? Cord. Don't want to know. All right, I'm going to put this to rest. I know exactly where Big Show got the truck. Um, he had it. For, he's had it for many years. And you would know this if you played WWE Crush Hour. Oh, okay. Yep. This Actually, he had the truck backstage. You know how in his theme song, it's like there's like a, there is the big, like, big ring horn? He actually is actually back there just going, bah, bah, and then he comes out. <laughs> very committed to that. Um, he's very committed, and also he's just making sure that in the event that one truck driver has a problem, he can help out, and also uh, makes a little money on the side. There you go. He oh, can, can we can we say how weird it was that there was just a pile of garbage cans? Yeah. <laughs> strategically placed in the middle of the uh, drop-off zone where the trucks are. You know, centrally located. That's all right. Listen, it was was the end of the show. They were just getting ready to take the trash cans out to the arena to clean up the floor. I I was just going to say, Riz, we're in a recession. We can't have someone with a Zamboni running over people and wires and cords anymore. You you just have to put some expendable things in the middle for a for a max so over. Yeah, and also one of them has to be filled with water to make sure that there's like some sort of tiny explosion. No, there no, was. It was a janitor's was, bucket. It was a janitor's bucket. All right. Well, we're the business. <laughs> All right, let's get to the hell in the cell then. Uh, the big match, of course, Randy Orton, Daniel Bryan. We talked about it a little earlier. Uh, the rest of you guys that weren't there for that part of it. Uh, do you do you really think anything's going to be satisfying coming out of this? I think so. Yeah. I think that, like, if you, Hell in a Cell has always been this, like, classic, well, since they Hell in a Cell as a match has always been a story ender. Yeah. Or they've at least tried to end stories that way. Uh, mostly because the next pay-per-view is Survivor Series, and the only way that you can really keep the story going is to roll it into the, the, the Survivor Series themes. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't really, you don't really build any story off of that other than like maybe some tiny thing that happens in one of the matches. Yeah. So Hell in a Cell fits in that nice spot where you can basically tell existing stories. And then when you're done, if you want to you out into the Survivor Series teams and play have TLC for no real reason in December and then go into the Raw pulling into WrestleMania season. Hell in, a, Hell in a Cell is basically the last stop before we start prepping for WrestleMania. Yeah. 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 You can start you can start feuds going into Survivor Series that can fall into WrestleMania and it's a nice like six month chunk. If you want to do a really long program, that's when you start it. So Hell in a Cell marks a nice easy way to cut that off. Now, if they want to do a... I, I honestly, at this point, storyline-wise, 
it makes sense to maybe put the belt on Orton. Mm-hmm. I know that they that Brian's been held down the entire time, but it may help put the belt on Orton. Finally, get CM Punk out of the Paul Heyman thing. Let him go nuts on Heyman, and then he finally wakes up, and we go back to what I like Paul was earlier, where Paul Heyman's a stooge. And you can now get CM Punk involved in the Triple H thing, and then you have Punk and Brian tag teaming and teaming up to go after more than Triple H. Yeah. I would like to see something like that. Mm-hmm. If you want to continue that storyline with the Authority, I, I think Randy Orton does have to win. Yeah, I mean, there's and no I way around the, it. I think the storyline with the Authority has worked out really, really well, mm-hmm. and I don't think they need to stop it. Because I don't know, honestly, if you were to stop the authority storyline right now, what do you go to? See, there's only one thing that scares me about all of us saying Orton has to win. And it was something that they that they talked about last night on Raw. Is there a possibility that we get Daniel Bryan as WWE champion, but it eventually leads to a match with Triple H for the title? It could. No, I think it could. I think no, it could. I, I, it, it could. But I think that it doesn't do it doesn't do anybody any good to put the belt on Triple H again. It does Triple H good to put the belt on Triple H again. <laughs> yeah, this is exactly again. what I'm saying. I don't know. I don't know. They I, put I, the belt I, on I, the I, Rock, a guy who wasn't going to be here for seven weeks out of eight, building up to WrestleMania. Yeah. I don't see it. I don't. I don't. I don't yeah, see listen, him going they, win the title or face the champion. I see him being the authority figure in the authority. He is the COO of a company. He is not going to put his life on the line for that belt. Riz, I know he's Triple H. I know he's Triple H. Riz, and I know he, I does, he has done that before. Vince McMahon winning the WWE title. I direct you to that. I think it's a different. I here. To the Rock people. was a, was the, quote unquote a special occasion, and really they only put it on the Rock so they could put the belt on Cena for Evening Mania, right? So that's a step one, and that's that's the Rock's business to the side. Now, would it have been nice for them to have the belt on Cena and have to beat the Rock to keep the belt? Yeah, but Cena winning the belt at Mania. Is better than him retaining at Mania. It just doesn't. You can't have a, you know a, a sparkler finish and everything like that if the guy just I won and I get to keep it. Like it doesn't work as well. So if you, I don't think they would do it with that in mind. I don't think they would put the belt on. I don't think they would. Triple H would put the belt on himself to do a match with Daniel Bryan. You can do a Triple H and Daniel Bryan match and have it have nothing to do with the title. See CM Punk and Triple H in SummerSlam two years ago. And who won that match? Triple H did. It yeah, doesn't matter. Exactly my point. No, 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 no. Your point is that you would put the belt on Triple H to get to a match with Bryan. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm saying the other way around. I'm saying Bryan... Wins at Hell in the Cell. Orton gets a rematch, loses, and then Triple H looks at Daniel Bryan. First looks at Randy Orton and says, you know what? I thought you were the face of this company. But if you can't do it, I guess I'm going to have to do it myself. Yep. It would do nothing but be a fuck you to the, to the internet, really. I, I don't oh, think and they've never done a fuck you to the internet I don't think they'd do that to Randy Orton anyways, though. No. No, they, they don't do that to Orton, though. Nah. They're not going to do it to Orton. They're, if they're going to have the title, they're going to have it on Orton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They want Triple H to, to play Evil McMahon. That's what, the, that's what this is. This is effectively going back to the corporate champion with The Rock and Vince versus Stone Cold. That's mm-hmm. exactly what this is. Instead of Stone Cold and be a guy being a badass, you have Daniel Bryan just being a badass wrestler. They took out the Zamboni and the beer spilling and the, the, the stunners, the security guard. And it's just Daniel Bryan. And put Big Show in a, I, a big truck. 
But other, quite honestly, they they it's the it's the same base storyline. Mm-hmm. They have no need to put the belt on Triple H. They can put it on Orton. I it, I see them putting the belt on Orton, continuing the authority storyline, and then getting CM Punk involved. Well, speaking Just because of the, the stuff from two years ago. Speaking of the top of the line and top of everything, we got to return in kind of an interesting spot. And maybe it's because we got so much going on with the authority and everything. But John Cena against Alberto Del Rio out of nowhere, World Heavyweight Championship match. John Cena is even doing his own promos with his iPhone held the wrong way. <laughs> My problem with this is why the hell does John Cena need to have a title match? And why does he need to go for the World Heavyweight title? There's something fruity in the loops here. Mm-hmm. There is something fruity in the loops here. I think we're going to get Cena beating Del Rio, but then Del Rio slapping on the arm bar to get Cena, like, completely incapacitated, mm-hmm. Damian Sandow. Yep, that's what that I think is going to happen, interesting. So, so Cena's going to be the go-between? Or like, Cena's going to be the, 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 I don't uh, know. The, uh, because then it takes Cena out for another couple months. Or Okay. Oh, so he's they planning well, on they said they said elbow elbow surgery is gonna take four months too. Yeah. Ah, that's a bit outside. Okay. So so they're gonna do something, protect the and cover the idea of the arm and and put him out again. Like this Del is Del like, Rio's already been pushing that he's that Cena had elbow surgery and that he's going to tear that elbow out of its socket. Huh. He's already been pushing that. It makes all the sense in the world. It doesn't hurt Del Rio for Cena to beat him because, let's face it, Cena's beaten Del Rio before. Right. And then it elevates Sandow for him to have cashed in on Cena. Hmm. And then he gets to say, I beat John Cena for this title. Right. And then you don't even have to bring back Cena against the World Heavyweight Champion. You can bring him back in the Rumble. Okay. Okay. And I, I, I think that that... My problem is, is that you're right. It's 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 fruity because there's they they've already got they've got a bigger plan here. So like to me, it's one of those like what the fuck are you doing? Like when they said Cena's gonna wrestle for real, but the title, I'm like, for what? But no, seriously, what the fuck are you doing, WWE? That was my exact reaction when I heard that. I was like, that's some bullshit. No I remember. Way. I remember we were in the hangout and Vicky said that. Everyone thought she was lying. Yeah. Because it doesn't make sense. It's like, oh, hey, let's have John Cena come back and fight the guy on, on top of SmackDown. Yeah. What? Unless it's just a thing to, 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 to really elevate SmackDown for some reason. I mean, they think the, the ratings need a boost or something, so they're sending them over there. That's the only thing I can think of, really. Um, no, because you know who just, you know who just returns, Sorg? Hmm. Who's that jumping out the sky? R E Y. Torito's yeah. been in a while. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one: CM Punk, Ryback, and Paul Heyman. We mentioned that. We talked about this. I, I think we've done that to death, right? <coughs> Any new thoughts? Yeah. It, uh, I just, uh, I just from a few years in a row, CM Punk versus Ryback and Elvis. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. Yeah. But flipped, right? Tag team match. I think it's going to be match of the night if it's anything yep. like we saw in the throwdown uh, last it night. It needs to be in the Hell in a Cell, though. Uh, it doesn't not need to be in Hell in a I, Cell. I, I want so it to be, though. It doesn't need not. to be. It doesn't need to be, but you want it to so be. so much yeah. more fun. Oh, you want everything want it to be. that we... We wanted the Divas Championship to be in Hell in a Cell for the longest time, right? Fuck mm-hmm. yes. An AJ Caitlin Hell in a Cell match would be phenomenal. Uh, I don't, I don't know about... It's AJ Bree, though. I don't know about uh, Caitlin. Uh, yeah, Bree. I don't know. Oh, that that show would be amazing. AJ versus Caitlyn in Hell in a Cell? If that were real, can you imagine Caitlyn spearing the daylights out of AJ into the cage? Yes! This is exactly the right point. Shit. Oh, my God. Somebody, no, seriously, somebody would die in that match. It would be AJ, because she's like 80 pounds. She would get oh, impaled man. by like one tiny spike. Have you ever really tried to like feel, have you ever felt the chain link fence? And somebody didn't do a very good job of cleaning it. And there's like those like fucking spike bits on the fence that would impale her. <laughs> I, I wouldn't think WWE does a better job with it. Indie wrestling, not so much. Um, no. 
And speaking of AJ and Brie, um, I'm actually kind of okay with this match. I I, I don't care. I, I don't. I hope AJ breaks her in half. I, I don't mm-hmm. care. Bree's actually per- like we've said in the post show. This is Bree, not Bree. Nikki. Yeah, no, 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 Bree no, no. is I, actually I, improving as a wrestler. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I hope we just hug each other to death. Really, <laughs> I agree with Bobby. Uh, the, the match on Monday was one of the better divas match featuring Bree Bella yeah. that mm-hmm. has ever happened. Definitely growing on me. Definitely growing and on me. That, uh, that last that last little moment with her, you know freaking out and then kicking people and then doing stuff was better than half the things she has done in this business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's including Daniel Bryan. Whoa. Ah! Whoa. Beardy. <laughs> and then of course, uh, in, in probably the most anticipated kickoff show ever, uh, uh, Curtis Axel and Big E Langston. Five. <laughs> Five. 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 I really hope that he brings back the five thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, hey, he's teaming up with CM Punk. He's doing cool things on Raw. Here's hoping, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, that's a Hell in a Cell this weekend. You guys are going to be watching it. We'll talk about it next week. Uh, hopefully we get a chance to do another uh, wrap-up show, I guess, uh, after it uh, as well. Um, two so hours, sort Two hours? No! Well, two that's hours. Well, that's for sure. I'll tap out. Two-hour wrap-up show. So, uh, with that, hey guys, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? What about you, Riz? I learned that Jimmy Cordero likes his soft pretzels. <laughs> That's all you got, man. <laughs> well, it's better, it's have, better like, than three me of them saying or something. That, Maybe they don't have soft pretzels in Canada. Yeah, it's better than me saying that uh, RJ City and Dalton Castle think I'm. A Muppet <laughs> and a Greaser. Hey, you know what? The one guy does work on Nickelodeon shows, so it's probably not too he far does. off. He does. It's very confused. Very confused. Um, very confused. Excellent. Uh, you, uh, yeah. Oh, you know, Cordaris, Cordaris was a cool guy. Uh, I got to talk to him a little bit there Sunday. Well, well Saturday and Sunday there. Uh, what about you, Mad Bobby? Mad Bobby? Mad Bobby. Oh, no. Um, I learned that snakes can grow hair. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I learned that um, somebody said on Twitter that if Randy Orton would have done the suplex that he did to Dolph Ziggler, he would have fired himself. <laughs> or that's, that's you know, yeah, you yeah, know I heard that. yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. What about you, Eamon? Uh I learned from wrestling this week that nothing marks my, nothing melts my heart more than broken English speaking Jushin Liger singing New York, New York. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Um, and, uh, wait, what? Oh, I forgot to prep them. Mad Mike, what about you? I don't even know if I can talk that. Shit. Um, I learned that Brooke Tessmacher can take one fuck of a powerbomb. That's what I heard. She, yo, she's a fucking hologram at the end of that night. She was, <laughs> dead. She was fucking dead. Um, uh, uh, Wheels learned that uh, from the chat that he can't get away from Virgil even in games. <laughs> <laughs> Use Virgil oh, the, the no. downloadable oh, content oh, for <laughs> Bruno <laughs> San Martino in a game. And Bruno San Martino's in there, man. I'm, do a Bruno I'm sorry. Like I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Iron Man match. Uh, AJ, I, what'd you learn? I, oh, wait, wait. Sorry, Riz. All right. Why is he in the game? <laughs> Why? If you if you notice in that press release, Virgil is free. No, good. <laughs> Virgil is free. So no, Virgil you know gets what? no money you know for what? this. They should give us money to play as Virgil. <laughs> wow. That just happened. Lord, what did you learn this week? I learned. Uh, oh, I, hey, fuckhead! Oh, AJ, I, AJ, what'd you learn? I learned two things. I don't know if you guys get to hear them now. That mic was going to cut me the fuck off. I learned two things. One, Hulu Plus doesn't put all of Raw on. The Santino segment was completely missing from the Hulu stream. Wow. Yeah, Hulu Plus cuts a lot from Raw. 
and uh, the Divas match wasn't on there either. So I didn't get to see that Divas well, match. Well, the whole thing is they cut it down to 90 minutes. Yeah, and so they cut off the Santino segment and the Divas match. Sometimes uh, they cut off a lot of shit to the sword. Yeah. And I also learned um, that Lady Tapa <laughs> could work her way into my heart. Because according to her Wikipedia page, she has two finishers. I don't remember what the first one was because it's not important. The second one, though, is my favorite wrestling move of all time, which is uh, Mark Merrill's old finisher, the TKO, which was the fireman's carry into the diamond cutter, ace cutter, RKO, whatever you want to call it. Okay. I love that move. And that's apparently her finisher. And she was making it just eat that shit in OB you. And if she would have done that to Brooke Tesslocker, I would have jumped through my terribly uh, grainy, fully paid for wink wink stream because that would have been awesome. I would have totally done that shit. I love the TKO, and I wish uh, nothing more than that. Oh, oh, uh, also three. My son is a fucking natural. If you put him in a Texas corporate, that motherfucker crawls for the boats like a champion. He will not tap. <laughs> Never. You put a clover, clover leaf on a one year old? He did. Learning the He rolls over. He throws the shoulder immediately. Like, if you try to put him on his back, he's like, nah, I don't like this. And he throws the shoulder over. So one day I was changing his diaper and I was holding his one leg and he rolled over and it rolled right into the clover leaf. But well, whatever, let's pull up here. And so I pulled up like a little bit and he immediately did a push up and started crawling for my leg. So I was like, all right, you've got the touch. You've got the power. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I don't know what to do there. I mean, the, kid's a, the kid's a natural out of the gate. I, I, oh, and also, my brother's going to wrestling school. So, uh, congratulations to Parole F. Diggity uh, for learning how to awesome. take bumps and stuff. That's awesome. Uh, BF is for flatbacks. I learned, uh, yeah, there you go. I learned. Uh, <laughs> I learned uh, the perils and uh, some tips on uh, whether I should own a boat from Rhino. Um, the answer is never. Yeah. So actually, are you going to buy was. a boat? He was actually like, yeah, actually, don't buy a boat. Just get a friend with a boat. I'm like, hmm. All right. Uh, and there were several, several other things uh, over the weekend. Um, but some of them don't really involve wrestling. It was just happened at wrestling. Jimmy uh, Corderas oh. is a saint. Jim, Jimmy Corderas is a saint. He is the nicest dude I've ever yes. met in pro wrestling. I, I seriously, I, I learned disagree. so much. We did. We, we, who who do you think it is? Paul London. Paul London. Uh, Paul, the man, London Paul London's a nice dude, but the, he's not man, Canadian. No, no, no. no. The, the, the man, the man went every to everyone in that building and shook everybody's hand. Even though he thinks I'm someone he knows. <laughs> I don't know why. Are you talking about, wait, are you talking about like before the show or? Before the show. Well, they, they always shake everybody's hand though. But, yeah. uh, but I think he did shake everybody's hand in the audience uh, coming yeah, to the resolution. He too. did a second entrance in the uh, IWC as I well. I thought he did like five of them in one group. Um, but no, he did He did that. It was, it was great at resolution because... Um, Nobody knew this, but he he went around, did one round uh, of everybody, and there's like a ton more people there than at IWC since they're a big event. And then he left through the bathroom in his entrance. Of course. Um, little did I think many know, and I didn't realize this until halfway through when I ran into Aiden Bale in the bathroom coming from a, a door I didn't know existed. Uh, you go on one side of the bathroom, the other side came out the locker room, so he just came right back out the entrance. So it was kind of fun. Um, guys, Wrestling Mayhem Show, WrestlingMayhemShow.com, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, uh, Good, good Times, or WrestlingMayhemShow.com, 412206WMS0. Tell us your mayhem thoughts on uh, the Facebook. <laughs> wrestling sure, get himself show. a black eye. It's fucking late. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. wait. Yeah!